in the option of maybe picking uh, Alistar up themselves. But, um, you know, maybe Cyanide doesn't like to play Alistar that much. Maybe they just want to continue with the Maokai. It did work out well game one, uh, just, you know, not so much that last game. Yeah, it's, it's it seems that Fnatic, they're really taking the shine to the Maokai. They want to have uh, team comps and uh, things that work well with the Maokai. It's just, it's a lot of teams, they just have that, you know, they have that game plan. Because sometimes you'll see a lot of teams They'll stick with like one or two champs in certain positions. Champs they know that they realize aren't going to be huge banning targets, and then stick around and try and make a comp around that. And uh, Maokai seems to be really it for Fnatic at the moment. Aurelia also being banned out here yeah, too. Aurelia she has a problem. crushed the top lane, and I, I've been kind of wondering whether or not Aurelia, uh, with the nerfs to some of the top laners like your Grumble and Zin, that Aurelia just won't come out as like the most dominant top laner. Um, and I think that's a, a big possibility with some of those other nerfs. Mm -hmm. uh, she just seems to win every single matchup and she's just really strong overall. But uh, you saw how much pressure she was able to put onto Jace that last game. Oh yeah, and but here's the thing though. So we have a lot of champs uh, being left open here. Uh, at least on Fnatic's side, Karthus open, Nunu open, Malphite open, the Shivana ban coming on in. That's, uh, well, we haven't quite seen Shivana yet in the series, but then again, uh, they banned out Karthus uh, game too. We didn't, uh, it wasn't really a, a huge threat game one either because he wasn't there. Yeah, so we'll see what they're trying to run. Um, Shivana to me, I don't know, maybe they're trying to run a, uh, they want to run like that backline Nunu comp. Mm. Uh, so Fnatic might first pick yeah. a Nunu, leave open Maokai for a second. I don't know, we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, um, Curse, huh. Nunu ban might not be that bad here, but I, I don't know, there's a couple of options. Maokai, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there we go. So I think uh, with Shivana, my concern is that you're they're worried about uh, counter drawing. The Malphite is left open though, so Fnatic will go ahead and grab him up, but York is left open, and you know, there is no Nunu ban. Karthus left open as well, so now Curse is actually going to go ahead and pick him up. Yeah, and the uh, Yorick Karthus combo is very strong. Um, you know, Karthus, as always, just farm in the late game, you eventually win. Oh, yeah. But having the Yorick, uh, you proc the Yorick ghoul first, and you just run around AoEing in the middle of the team, and then you go to the Karthus ghoul. So, yeah. um, you know, it's a really nice combo. Ari, though, completely shuts down Karthus in a lot of situations, so we'll see how effective uh, XPK's play can be. And you know, we've known him to be uh, just a fantastic Ari in the mid lane. And Fnatic also taking away the Nunu so that Curse can just not have it. Um, you know, I'm also uh, <laughs> I'm also thinking to myself a little bit here. You have uh, Karthus with the York ult, with the passive, and the Guardian Angel. How ridiculous would that be? That'd just be silly. Yeah, that no. would just be silly. And let's throw in a Zillion support, and I don't oh, know. Are you uh, listening, Curse? Yeah, Zillion <laughs> support, do it. But Do see, it. here's here's going to be the difficulty for <laughs> Curse is they need to get Fnatic or they need to get Karthus into that later game, and Malphite and Ari both shut down Karthus. So mm -hmm. uh, Malphite, if it's jungle, then the Malphite ultimates on Karthus. Karthus will die just easily every single time, which means that they partially they need a jungler that can keep up and keep an eye on the Malphite. Um, so we'll see how they go with that. They are leaving their jungler open, though, going ahead with the Soraka. So, um, you know, Nunu, he is a very aggressive support at times, but he doesn't have the, quite the kill potential to take down Soraka. So Soraka combos well with the Karthus. Uh, you know, they have great global presence. Just keep Karthus alive, and hopefully his AoE will win them the game. I would like to see, you know, well, it's just a matter of the jungler here for Curse. And... Or top lane. Or top. Or top lane. You, or I, honestly, I, w I would expect that Malphite's going to be in the jungle so that yeah. he can put pressure on Karthus, and then they uh, they send someone like Rumble up in the top lane. They could. They could very well do that. Or we can. Do, we haven't seen it in a while. Could see the Karthus jungle. <laughs> it's been a while. It, it's it been has a been while. a while for good reason. <laughs> Yeah, Karthus jungle, he's fast. He's fast and furious. He's a lot of fun. Uh, it's not going to be a Karthus no, jungle, though. I know. I, I, don't, it's so, I, I will thinking. say, if Maluno plays Karthus jungle, I am going to be pissed. What? I am. No, I'm just, it'll be fun. I'll just, <laughs> I'll flip out. Uh, they go ahead and grab the Mundo. So it is going to be Malphite top, actually. Okay. Um, you know, so that's very oh. coming. Oh, wait, oh. last second. We sin. Yeah, so they have some flexibility there. We'll see where they decide to go with that. Yeah, so they're not going to make their decision until they know for sure, you know, what the uh, the last pick here from Curse is going to be. It could be either or is very valuable. So it's a matter of uh, Curse picking uh, someone who can. Well, it's, it's York going to be there in the top lane. It's just a matter of uh, who can uh, who can perform well against either Lee Sin or Malphite in the jungle. Yeah, and I think Mundo is a very strong pick for jungler. Um, 
you know, we'll see who they decide to go with. The, the yeah. thing with Mundo is you can counter jungle very effectively. You can clear jungle. You need a fast jungler. Really, Nocturne would be the jungle if they had mm. an option here, because they want Nocturne. They want someone to prevent ganks on Karthus. That's that's their ma number one goal is to prevent ganks on Karthus, not allow Fnatic to abuse Karthus in that mid lane. Um, so we'll have to see where they go from there. There are a couple of stronger junglers. They could go with an Amumu and decide mm. to go an AOE Karthus Amumu comp. Um, you know that's always very strong, but uh, I don't know. We'll have to see where they go. Mundo, there Mundo. you go. Yeah, I, I th Mundo is just such a safe jungle. And the big thing is that he can counter out aggression against Karthus in the mid. So you want a strong jungler to be able to support your mid lane since Karthus needs to farm. Now we've seen uh, we've seen this combo before, the Soraka Mundo coming in. Oh, uh, that's fantastic. It's a fantastic, wonderful combo. You have a f such a great tanky Mundo, body up front. Mundo is one of the best champions in the game uh, for heals. He, yeah. he really... Uh, thrives off of heals if you get Spear Visage as well. That's kind of cool. That'd but huge. Um, the big thing is Mundo's damage is really strong early in the game, and he's just so tanky. So uh, we'll see. They have a very strong you know team comp right now. They have some nice AOE control. They have um, a lot of survivability for their damage. And, uh, yeah, we'll see how they can control fights. But I, I do really like Fnatic's comp as well. Yep. And I'm also, uh, you know, that york Karthus combo. Like to see that it's 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 I mean it's an interesting combo, but it's also designed for the uh, for the mid game, for the late game. So it's it's a matter of actually getting there first before you actually see this plan come into action. Yeah, and uh, if you go ahead and check the text there, you've got a little yeah. date planned out. Uh, yeah. So yeah, that'll be that'll be fun. But um, yeah, it should be it should be a really exciting match. Uh, I am excited to see you know what Fnatic can do and whether or not Curse can make that comp work. And I, th I think mm. the big thing, uh, you know, Karthus can be very strong, but a lot of times, um, and a lot of times if you just, you know, get off all of your AOE and die, you can yeah. just easily clean up fights. However, Fnatic's team, hard initiation against Karthus, it tends to work out pretty well. And Ari tends to work out pretty well against Karthus. So uh, we'll see if they can get into that later game where they want Karthus to take over or if they just won't be able to win fights. Because the issue is if Karthus isn't in the middle of your team and Ari bursts, her da uh, bursts Karthus down without Karthus doing any damage, uh, and then all of a sudden you're just worthless. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's way... So much the Yorick does help a lot, though. It does, it does. But the thing is, it's kind of—it's like a you know—you can only do so much though as a goal. And if you ha and if there's already enough burst damage coming in from Fnatic to go ahead and take him out, there's going to be enough follow up to go ahead and kill him a second time. And even then, even even if you don't, you're still going to be—you're—you're you're still already gotten such a huge command of the fight because you've taken him out so early on. The issue is that Fnatic has enough mobility where they could almost kill Karthus. If, even if he comes back as a ghoul, they can all just get out of there and yeah. retreat and then um, be okay. But we'll, we'll see uh, whether or not they have to force the fight on themselves. Um, you know, they have great mobility, though, with Ari and with Lee Sin in particular, mm -hmm. and then also uh, Corky. So um, uh, we'll, we'll see what they can do with it. Or even then, they can just go ahead and you know, like, let, let, let Karthus do whatever. Who cares about the Karthus? Just work on shutting down the remaining two lanes. Force Karthus to actually be all the farm. Force him to be the hope to carry the team. And then burst him down. And then just shatter his dreams. You can do that too. Build him up. Build you up. build him up just to tear him down. You could. You very well could. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll have to see. I, you know, it's... Uh, both teams have very interest, a very interesting team. Curse, as the game progresses, though, they could become almost unkillable uh, as far, from Fnatic's perspective. Right. And, um, you know, Fnatic has the mobility that they should be okay. They'll be able to drag out those fights. But the issue is if they can't take down Mundo and Yorick, and then if Karthus just becomes too tanky and he's running, you know, diving right at them, and uh, if Fnatic just can't kill them fast enough. Yep. And you'll notice, too, there's a lot more Ignites there on Fnatic than uh, we've seen previously. No more Cleanse. No more Cleanse on Lamy this time around. So that way, uh, you know, you want those kills in the middle of those team fights. An Ignited Mundo is not as useful of a Mundo as you would like to have. But we'll see uh, how, uh, how that goes on. And if Fnatic can actually go ahead and get that early huge massive advantage, then there really is no farm to be had. There is no mid-game or late-game for Curse to take advantage of.
Yeah, so here we go. Three minutes and counting will be in the game. Yep. Um, yeah, but it should, it should be really interesting. Bot lane, Corky and Nunu versus Ezreal and Soraka Ooh. will be a very defensive lane. Corky and Nunu have a slight advantage there, but Ezreal and Soraka will be very safe. They're just going to be able to sit back and farm. It is going to be Lee Sin in the jungle and Malphite top, which means that uh, there, it's not going to be quite as much pressure against uh, Karthus, but you can always see uh, Mal or Soaz making his way down, and that's a lot thing, something you see a lot of times, particularly against a Karthus. You see Malphite in the top lane, and then he'll start roaming. So you, you push up the lane a little bit, you roam down towards the mid lane, you get the quick ult, they'll be able to take down Karthus very quickly. Um, so we'll see if that's the case. Lee Sin, you know, he is a very fast jungler. He gives them a, a lot of options. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see if he can get, get any quick ganks off. But uh, Yorick Malphite should be a pretty interesting lane because it, I, I don't know. I don't know if uh, Yorick has enough damage to keep down Malphite Shield, but I'm assuming that he would, generally speaking, win that lane pretty easily, actually. Yeah. And you also have Soaz actually switched, uh, does not have the Ignite, actually went with the Teleport. So uh, you could be uh, could be seeing that used to go into the into the mid or into the bot to go ahead and try and turn around those fights because you may uh, you may also see Moopsy here on Karthus look to just uh, possibly roam around a little bit to see if he can't uh, have a presence later on and get uh, some additional kills to try and assist that farm because XPK on Ari is going to be pretty mobile you may see the Karthus leave actually to try and help uh, sway fights yeah so we'll have to see um, you know how this ends up working but. Uh... I don't know, definitely some nice early advantages for Fnatic. And the big thing is if they can pressure them enough in order to take control of the game um, and pull it away from Curse. So, you know, Curse, they can stall pretty easily. Karthus can just stall at towers forever with yep. his wall. Um, and we'll see whether or not they can, you know, get into that Karthus late game. Yeah, just, you know, checking up on the war, on the, uh, the runes and masteries just to see if there's a, uh, you know, for, for any, uh, I like how it's called a Heimer AP page. <laughs> Heimer is the best. He is he is the best right now. And then he's gonna get reworked and he's really gonna be the best right now. Those turrets OP man. Yeah, I saw the uh the leak and that's insane. Yeah. I'm not sure if I want to talk about it, but Yeah, we we'll we'll pass on that for another time. <laughs> but uh oh yep, and you also got the you know, these are your pretty uh, average uh, support pages here, just lots yep. of GP tens. You might and, yeah, you have you have your yellows, you have your quints, that's essentially another that is a that is a GP ten item on its own. Yeah, kind of surprising he's not running uh, yellows for armor, but, you know, he's he's fine with that. He's going to get a lot of gold. He yep. has the armor from, you know, playing Soraka, so yeah. uh, that'll be fine. There's plenty. Yeah, it's like, well, you know, we, we need some armor. Well, Soraka's here. It's no big deal. And it's that's the big issue. thing with Soraka, and <laughs> as this game progresses, that's going to make it very difficult for Fnatic to pick up kills if they don't get early advantages. Because mm -hmm. Fnatic has a nice mix of damage, Corky in particular, uh, he's nice mi a nice mix of magic and physical, but he also has true damage, which I think a lot of people forget about. Yep. And the true damage uh, in particular will work very well against champions like Mundo, but um, the concern is... As the game progresses, Fnatic or Curse has a pretty tanky team, and then with the heals of Soraka, uh, HP and heals they counter out magic damage. So Ari's just—it's going to be tough for Ari to burst people down like she would like to. Then the armor from Soraka will counter out some of that physical damage that they have coming in from Corky, from Lee Sin. Malphite doesn't really do that much damage. I mean, he has—he has really good burst, but in a sustained fight, he doesn't do a lot. So, um, you know, we'll see. Uh, how you know Fnatic can try and control the early game because if it gets a little bit too late, there's a point where Curse is just gonna be able to control it. Yeah, and at the very least, Malphite, if he does decide to itemize later on into something like a Sunfire Cape, yeah. it'll it'll give him a little bit extra. But yeah, he's not really there. The big advantage for, for Fnatic in fights though is going to be the fact that they have great mobility and uh, Karthus. You know, they could just kite him all day, and Karthus is going to be running around trying to chase people down and pick up kills, and just won't be able to grab anyone. So yeah, we'll see how that goes here. You got Curse looking to uh, mobilize here, looking to defend the Wraiths. It looks like uh, Mundo's actually going to be starting here at the to start off with red buff, maybe even for a quick level two. But you do see that the Cyanide's got the same inkling here. So it looks like both junglers want that red. They want to see if they can't make something really quick happen level two and get an aggressive gank on. Yeah, and so Nunu walking up, going to drop a ward for them. Uh, will be pretty safe. Keep an eye on what Mundo's route is. Um, they're actually invading some against Lee Sin. Are they going to all go for it and try and steal this red? They there, might actually do that. There is a ward, though, and right now XPK does uh, does show himself right here to Curse, and I think that's going to be more than enough to make uh, Curse see you things. Like, you know what? This is a pretty terrible idea. We spent way too much time on a defensive end. We might as well just go ahead and uh, stick with the original plan. Actually, Mundo's actually going to be starting on the Wolves and going to Blue first, I think, because uh, you, you do have a Nunu. 
You do have the uh, oh, they're buddy gonna steal it. They are and rated did not buy it. They're also uh, setting yet. their bot top. So oh, Corky this. and Nunu are going to go top lane and Curse is actually transitioning over. They don't want this red to be gone. Oh man, this could be huge. This could be absolutely huge. Fnatic, they have no idea at the moment. They're gonna be a little well, that's you gotta wait ten more seconds, XPK. It doesn't quite work like that. But uh yeah, right now Curse, they're all waiting. They're all and waiting. And they know they're there, so they know they can just wait for the kill. Okay, so it's a matter of how long are you going to wait. Not very long. Enraid out in front. Did get the consume first. They wanted to ensure that he bought it first. Does flash over the wall. The ignite still ticking on him. Will Enraid get away? The ignite has done ticking. And he will be able to get out barely. No, there's the flash. The ignite. Angus getting that kill. Very well done. Yeah, nice job from Angus. I'm a little bit surprised that he, he wasn't doing damage to him in the first place. Uh, he was kind of off yep. to the side, zoning off the rest of Curse, because he wanted to make sure that they had to fight advantage. But uh, being able to pick that up is huge, particularly since he's going to be switching down to the bottom lane. But both lanes, they're actually yeah. both teams are switching their bots and their tops. So, um, you know, we'll see how that works. Uh, if Yorick actually decides to grab that blue for some nice control, Cyanide keeping an eye on it, <laughs> we'll be able to zone them off of it. Yeah, Lamy here has a rough time top lane slapper. Actually doing quite a bit of work, forcing the potion. But yeah, you see, oh, Lee Sin was going to be meeting up with the Mundo here in the Bot River Exhaust going down onto the Lee Sin. Maluno trying to capitalize as much as he can. Does have the cleaver going on to shield going down onto Soaz. We'll get Cyanide out of there. Yeah, so just barely able to back off. Uh, Angus will be able to go down to the lane. Nunu uh, taking the Wolves, trying to get an advantage in that top lane. Uh, but the big thing is he, he's actually going to take the blue as well. So N-rated taking the blue for the top lane uh, dual lane. N the big issue, though, is he's kind of setting Corky behind. So Corky should be able to grab this blue uh, for some spam ability. Won't be the biggest you know, uh, benefit this early, but um, you know it'll still be nice. A little bit later, it'll be a little bit nicer. Yeah. But uh, yes, yeah, so that's actually really interesting with Fnatic doing right now. The issue is that they're going up against a Soraka, and uh, Soraka with Ezreal, Ezreal can just constantly spam harass, and then Soraka's just going to keep him topped off, and it's a very strong easy lane. Or, you know, forbid Lamia actually gets killed on is the Lamia next Is going to run a 2v1? I one, I don't think so. I think a Nunu, well, here's the thing. Because Cyanide, with all that fighting that he's been doing, he's severely behind Malunu right now. Yeah. And it's just like, you know what, I'm so far behind, we might as well just go ahead and give the buff to someone that can actually have a, you know, a chance at winning a lane and doing oh, well but despite Mundo the chasing down in. Ari, forcing out the flash. XPK is able to back out there. So might as well just give it to, give it to the AD carry. Give it to someone who has a, a better chance at making a better use of it. And Cyanide's going to be very far behind for a very long time. And that is a big problem with Lee Sin, is that if you start off slow, if you start off at a, miss, a massive disadvantage, that puts your that makes your ganks immensely weaker. You become a support Lee Sin. You become a shield bot. And until you get your farm, that's really all he's going to be. Yeah, and Mundo chasing him down again, trying to get up. Actually, Karthus with the wall, the shield, and the ward from Cyanide, knowing wow. he needs to get out of there. So far, though, uh, some nice advantages for Curse. And bot lane uh, is in the advantage of Fnatic. Malphite, he's able to abuse Yorick early on. So okay. Yorick just doesn't have enough damage to drop the shield. He actually started off with a Doran shield. So he's just incredibly tanky, very strong. Mundo coming in once again onto Ari. Ari doesn't have the flash this time. If they can get the cleaves, the exhaust. Karthus is going to be able to follow it up. One more Q, picks up the kill. But Maluno will go down. And then Lee Sin cha uh, chasing after Moopsie here. He's out of mana. So Lee Sin will get some nice damage but not be able to finish it off. Yep, so there you go, one for one there in the mid. Best thing you can hope for. And I'm also noticing this too from Cyanide. Cyanide is actually getting counter jungled pretty heavy by his own team because you do see Enraid actually coming down and grabbing those wolves quite often. He's pretty much ex uh, limited to only the lower part of the jungle. So he's going to continue to stay behind for quite a while. But now with uh, with Malunu actually going, uh, you know, with Malunu actually being deflected there uh, in the mid, this is going to be a little bit of an opportunity for Sainte to actually go ahead, catch up, focus down on his farm. And if Malunu continues to stay aggressive, if he keeps his lane presence up but doesn't connect on kills, that could be an opportunity for Sainte to actually get back into this game. Yeah, and I didn't realize it's it's wild to think that Malphite is just crushing uh, Yorick to this degree. Uh, once Yorick has some mana, he should be okay. But uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of that has to do with not being able to regen off of the minions. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Cyanide trying to catch up, but he's uh, a little bit behind Maluno right now. Maluno is doing pretty well. 84 armor. It's quite a yeah. bit. It's quite yeah, a bit. Yeah, he has a lot of armor.
<laughs> but a lot of uh, Yorick's abilities are actually magic damage. So um, it's it's just the fact that he's so tanky. He's able to walk up and tank the minions, and then yep. just you know force Angish off of the minion line. Yes, and uh, so with that, you know, Malunu now looking to uh, find out where he belongs. We got about another minute until uh, red buffs come up for actually for both of our junglers. Uh, top lane staying the course. Malphite actually uh, so is making his way over to uh, the mid. May actually be looking for an aggressive uh, aggressive gank here. On to Moopsy. You got Nunu actually getting into position as well, so Enray might be nearby with that snowball. So could be a three-man gank here mid. Where so is going, there he is. Blood Bowl going to keep him there. So you want that engaged. You want that extra movement speed. And just in a second, there is the flash and the ultimate coming from Soez. Moopsy there going to get charmed. And there you go. The ult from XP going to be more than enough to go ahead and finish off on that kill. So there you go. Now it's it's Moopsy being set behind. This is now sitting behind the Karthus, trying to deny him all that farm and trying to put XPK at that much more of an advantage. Yeah, that's what I was talking about earlier. That so as yep. uh, the Malphite Ari combo on Karthus, there's not a lot that he can do about it. Karthus using the teleport to get back down the bottom, but he is actually kind of low. And right when he gets into lane, Angus used the ignite on him just to get him low so he can harass him down. But Lee Sin is coming up behind him. The, uh, he does see him in the ward, so he will be safe here, but it does force him back a little bit. Cyanide getting some nice damage. They actually might change this down so as is going to be able to chase him down but cyanide's getting very low there's the karthus ultimate as well he forces the flash out of there oh. with the shield just barely surviving oh. the flash from angish able to pick it up i, I thought i was waiting he's like where's the Lee Sin shield we need it we, we we need it we need it no he's not going to have it just in time so unfortunately though, he used it right when karthus ulted he did he did but uh, yep, it's, just it's, not enough damage. Just not enough damage. Not enough to be able, not enough uh, time to actually get away from that one. And just one errant E from York will go ahead and take him out there. Uh, meanwhile, top lane. Meanwhile, in the top lane, <laughs> Slapper still doing very well here. While everyone's been off, kind of you know doing their own thing. You know, Corky's still 500 gold behind the Ezreal. So Slapper's doing a really good job uh, farming at this point. And you know, Curse. At this point in time, they're only about 1k ahead. They're on, we're on the ninth minute here. It's still, it's, it's a matter of, you know, how often will, uh, will uh, Corky be actually leaving the lane. And you'll see, too, that Enrain has been spending a lot of time just also not supporting. Just not, hasn't been, you know, quite around. Giving Lamy a little bit of a chance to go ahead and soak up more XP by just, you know, having a, a 1v2 situation here and farming a tower. Yeah, so, uh... I don't know. We'll see. I think the big thing is just trying to keep advantages over the um, Ezreal and Soraka. And I, I don't know. It's, it's, I'm not really sure like how to respond to the not supporting thing. <laughs> uh, but Lamia, you know, he is a little bit behind. But um, you know, as, as he hits level six or as he's now past level six, he should be able to range farm decently. The issue is that he just doesn't have enough sustain to go against the Soraka. So um, some nice advantages there. And Curse. You know, with the early lead, if Fnatic can't pressure it, uh, you know, Curse could be working into that really strong late game. Yeah, and Boo, XPK just trying to uh, trying to put a little bit of fear there into Moopsy. And if you look at the farm, too, I mean, Ari is actually really pulling ahead. XPK is doing very well, keeping the lead, keeping the advantage, and just, you know, forcing uh, Karthus into bad situations whenever possible and ready to get the nice little quick snowball on the Slepper just to annoy you. And uh, Moopsy has a little bit of time to go ahead and try and catch up to try and recoup that gold loss. Oh, and there you go, XPK with the ult. So as not going to be able to connect either, but Moopsy still has to get away, still has all the burst damage coming from XPK, and will actually be able to duck out quickly. There is no ult on Moopsy. It was used earlier to get the connect with the kill on the Cyanide, so it is not here. Unfortunate. Yeah, so he goes down once again, and with the flash down, uh, you know, he's going to be very vulnerable the next time that the Malphite ult is up. So it's, you know, just a much shorter cooldown. They could just yeah. continuously pressure that. Uh, Maludo, you know, needs to try and watch that lane a little bit more. In the meantime, Lee Sin and Malphite, they're chasing down Yorick once again. He throws off the Ignite versus Cyanide, uh, but the kickback gets Angish out of there. Yep. And now Soaz can be in control of that lane since Yorick is kind of low. Yep, Angish, may, uh, may, Angish is going to have to go back at some point. The mana is very low. Granted, he does have the tier, but it's not going to last him forever. And so as though, just looking to uh, flex his muscle just a little bit, does have that armor with the door shield. He's got his GP10s already, so that income over time is just going to begin to grow. He's getting returns on his investments. And at the moment, they're pretty even in farm, but so as yeah, very soon, 
should actually start being able to overtake, but Angus is actually still getting very aggressive. And you do have Malunu here looking to get, uh, get in the cleave, trying to get some harass, but alas, it's going to be for nothing. Yeah, and so as he has plenty of mana, so he should be fine to stay in lane as long as he can keep an eye on Mundo. And he needs to get a ward out. Um, doesn't quite have one right now, but even if Mundo comes in, uh, you know, it's it's it would be kind of tough for him to escape with the long lane because Mundo just has such great sticking power. But uh, so Malphite could just throw off a Q and try and run away, try and get out of there. His ultimate will be up in another, like, 15 seconds, so they might actually just go for a tower dive. Lee Sin setting up is just going to back off. Yep, and uh, Dragon is up, so uh, if any any teams get any sort of advantage, just go ahead and grab it here. But that's a disadvantage at actually sending your ADs top. If you do get that man advantage, it's going to take a little little while longer to go ahead and grab that Dragon. You may just not have the the, uh, the power, the damage, to actually go ahead and do it. Ping's going down once again on the Moopsie here in the mid. Exhaust going down, and MXPK will actually get the charm on the Mundo. Target not going to be hit there, and uh, Nunu is trying to make his way back, but Zinnick and Slepper no. They're going to try and cut him off at the path. He is in the bush, and Enrage should be able to get to safety. But he's actually walking. Well, don't walk back. Do not be walking back there. Yeah, and XPK being chased down by Maluno will be okay. We'll be able to get out of there. Cyanide actually turning it around, so they might try and turn him back into him. Uh, Moopsie, you know, dealing some damage. They will back off here, but actually turning onto Moopsie. Moopsie's very low. The oh kick no. in from Cyanide. He's actually trying for this kill. One more attack, and he can get it, but the exhaust just can't quite finish it off. There he goes. Kill he is kill. able to get him. Well, oh, XPK actually being chunked out huge, forcing the ult to try and get away. Slepper does have a lot of damage, but Malunu also still out in front. Any more procs on that ult still has one more. But, but the big uh, thing, Corky free farming up top. And yes. again, Karthus just can't farm. They just keep on you know killing him. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> he's not getting farming opportunities. So um, that can be huge for Fnatic if they can, can keep this up. Uh, so far, N rated as that support Nudu, he's been moving into the jungle a lot. So he's been stealing their jungle. He's been stealing the enemy jungle, stealing the race there right before that fight. And uh, I don't know, it, it's giving him a nice little uh, gold lead over Soraka. Um, you know, and Corky doing okay, keeping up with Ezreal despite Ez Ezreal's early advantages. Yep, so uh, with, with Moopsie being focused down quite a bit in the mid, it does put a lot of pressure on the other lanes to go and stay farmed to try and uh, counteract things when the, you know, and, and be that presence in the fights where Karthus is lacking. And right now, Slepper's actually getting pretty well farmed, actually the most farmed on the team at the moment. But uh, Ari, though, is still going to be a huge, huge, massive threat. Almost nearly a thousand gold lead over the Karthus. And with the Abyssal Scepter, that's just going to hurt that much more with those Sork Boots. Yeah, Ari is just going to be the key. The, uh, Ari is the linchpin yes. on uh, what Fnatic's trying to do because she's she's the one that's going to be able to roll, run these fights. XPK chasing after Karthus 10 seconds until the ultimate is up. Just can't quite pick her up. So uh, Moopsie, you know, really in a dangerous situation now because Ari could almost take him out by himself. Every single time that Karthus comes into the lane, he's going to have to worry about just going down to Ari. And then uh, if... XPK can start using that in Snowball other lanes, uh, that could be huge. But the other lanes are generally pretty safe, they're generally pretty tanky. So we'll see how Ari's fedness will impact uh, the <laughs> mid-game. Her, her, her fatness. Her fatness. Her there fatness. Go. She's getting pretty. She's getting pretty huge at the moment. And not her to weight. Mention, her, her heft. Well, it, it's it's uh, her she, mass. She's healthy. She's she's quite healthy right now. Big boned. <laughs> uh, so and also not also to mention Ari is level eleven, which means level two in the ultimate. So that burst damage coming in with those dies do actually happen are going to be that much more painful and that much quicker. That being the key point here, just in case everyone from Curse decides to crowd around mid, she can go ahead and get the damage and get out that much faster. And you got a blue buff there as well. The shave onto the yeah, new attempted they steal. they are going to the dragon and Karthus has plenty of damage early on with that blue, can easily clear it. They're going to get it very easily. So that's definitely yeah. a nice little gold advantage for them. Nice. Yeah, now uh, with that, the gold does swing just a tad into uh, back into the favor of Curse here, but uh, you do see Ari actually making her way down. Cleaver from Malunu leading the charge. Is he going to be taking out this turret? It looks like he will be. Moopsie wants to get this damage in, but here comes the Malphite ult. Going to be focusing down to Karthus. But Karthus wants that kill. He's very hungry for it. XPK also down here to try and get as much damage down. He got the dashes coming in. Zinnick will go down. You also yeah, have and Cyanide being very going weak. down underneath the turret. Karthus is still pretty high, but he's low on mana, and XPK can maybe get some kills here. If he gets the charm off, Angus is very low. One more Q from XPK. We'll pick it up. One more
one more auto attack, just can't finish it. And actually, the ghost trying to take him down, but end rated actually uh, picks up the kill in the Moopsie. So as will go down, but XPK is going to be okay. So all for all, is that was actually a very extended two for two. They almost they could have waited and let uh, Malphite get back to base and just recall, yeah. because Karthus was all out of mana, and um, oh they they could have just left him alone. Yeah, they could have, but uh, unfortunately. Truce. They did. They didn't. And also, that's N-rated uh, with that blue buff there, uh, you know, courtesy of the Karthus. Yeah. So that's going to help him out. Just you know, getting a lot of extra spam. And uh, you know what? He's a, he's a hungry dude. He needs that consume up a lot more. If he, especially if he's going to be going over for all those jungle creeps. And uh, if he wants to go ahead and keep his health high. Oh, not even going to be dead. Ah, uh, ah. Uh, not too much off of that one. Zinnick oh, though being caught out very quickly in the mid. A lot of burst damage. A lot of it coming in from Ari. Yeah, four one and one, 160 CS. Um, you know, if he had the death fires right now, it would be just devastating. So, yeah. um, you know, still with the abyssal scepter, he can control fights very well. He's very tanky as well, so not going down as fast as you would expect. Maluno trying to engage oh, no. though, and they're going to fight it. XPK with the spirit rush gets the charm as well. The quick burst damage. Maluno does go down, uh, so they're able to back off. Those uh, that those uh, did he get the ignite? It wasn't even ignited there, and he still he went down that quickly yikes yeah yikes. really fantastic burst damage uh from xpk and the cyanide just biding his time watching maluno run up for those wraiths was able to hold that off for him was actually baiting it in because there was the ward and so cyanide was sitting there uh and maluno walked up and was like ha 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 i see you i'm gonna get some damage nope yeah <laughs> not happening uh Moopsie is now level 12 is starting to get that farm back on up and also has the level two ultimate now. So that's gonna be hurting a little bit more than it usually would. And that could also provide some of the kills uh, to get some of the experience and catch up, which is something he so sorely needs. But meanwhile, you will have the, uh, the top lane presence there from Nunu. We're gonna push down Angus just a little bit because you set, you have Slepper now there in the bot lane to try and get the hurt down onto the Malphite. So the lane switch happens once again in Angus. I'm not sure. Oh, how Ezreal long chasing be down Malphite almost picked up that kill, but XPK is caught in the jungle and he's deal uh, dueling with Maluno, but he has to deal with Moopsy as well. He will use his Spirit Rush getting out of there, get some nice damage, but here's Angus as well coming in on the side and Cyanide going to cut them off, so they're able to back off. But uh, in the meantime, Slepper, he had chased down Malphite, was able to abuse him in that bottom lane, mm -hmm. uh, almost picked up the kill there. Yeah, but may not pick up the kill. But could, if he really wants to, actually grab that turret. He just pushed the wave in and just started to start detecting. You see Zinnick with the bananas already starting the process. They want to force that thing down. Angus is hungry. He's going to get hurt for a little bit from that N-rated Nunu ult. But here comes Soaz. Teleport top lane. Wants to secure it. I'm not even sure if that was all too necessary to do. But the thing is that you still have a lot of members of Curse nearby looking to capitalize on some damage. Malunu out there top lane. He's realized so as is going to be trying to poke on in, try and get a shard or two off, keep him slow to get that kill, but no, there's going to go ahead. Curse leaving the top lane turret to fall because Fnag let their bot oh, tier Ari. 1 come down. XPK, he's waiting, waiting for Once those that minions creeps. cleared. One, one shot. There you go. There's the charm. Slepper going to be damaged quite a bit there. Where is the Spirit Rush, though? It is not up. Used earlier. And XP actually regretting the decision a little bit. But here comes the ult. No, we'll not be getting Ari there. But here comes Karthus. Double. Oh, no. Gonna get one, though. Yeah, and every kill, 5-4-2 and two for Karthus now, despite dying repeatedly early on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he's catching up into this game. He has the Rod of Ages. Slepper's going to be able to take down that <laughs> turret, which Very is well going done. to be huge. So they can just continue to stall off. Oh. N-rated chasing him away, but it's still, it's one hit away. So uh, we'll see how far <laughs> he chases. Ari is in pursuit as well with that Spirit Rush. But very low, so very yeah, we'll back low. off. Like the minions could take her out if given a shit. You know, like, like, oh, you know, if the minions had five seconds worth of data, they'd actually be able to take her out. But uh, it is definitely a I'm huge I'm just imagining like the, the minions as like the mafia, and they, they've got like, <laughs> I don't know, their gloves on. They're like, just give me five seconds with her. Yeah, I'll take her out. I'll take her out. No, you got me no problem. You know, you know, give you a reason to call you purple sweetness. It's okay. We're good. Some purple <laughs> sweetness. sweetness. If you haven't seen that video, by the way, IPL LOL on YouTube. We had a, a good good buddy of ours, Strato, actually voice uh voice a minion. It came out amazing. Do do definitely check that video out. Uh, so you do in the gold lead. There really is none. It's been quite even 
pretty much this entire game is just a matter of where the gold is going. Yeah, and it's yeah. it's all on Ari, basically. Pretty so much. So Ari and card this, and that, I mean, that's who they wanted on. Uh, yeah. Ezreal, he has a nice advantage over Corky as well, so uh, Ezreal's pretty farmed, and having Ezreal and Karthus farmed for Curse is mm -hmm. absolutely huge. If Xpeke, you know, can take down one of them, that would be big, but uh, getting the Deathfires now, that's definitely key. Having that yes. Deathfires Abyssal combo to be able to single to uh, just burst someone down. But here's the big story here, is that Moopsie, for a, for a while, for a point, was actually around 1,000 gold behind XPK, but now that gap has actually closed immensely. He's actually now almost even. So the fact that he's able to actually come back from that is actually really huge. But we'll just see if they can uh, go ahead and continue that and uh, maybe even overtake. But you do have all five members of Fnatic here looking to push here in the mid. That mid tier one is actually very low. I think Curse may actually just go ahead and let it fall. Yeah, so they grab that very easily. Ezreal regrouping with the rest of the team. And um, I don't know, we'll see. The big thing for Fnatic is their great initiation and their great mobility. If they can burst someone down, XPK, if he can grab Karthus, that's, I mean, just huge for them. But uh, they can't allow themselves to get too low where Karthus can just ult and take him out. But Angus almost dropping instantly. Malphite going to force the fight. XPK uh, with the engage. No. And actually, Lamia's going to be able to take him down. Enrated will go down as well. But Yorick used the ult on himself. So no Karthus school. Uh, so as actually trying to get out of there, but will go down. And so despite the early advantages, Ezreal's turning this around. Maluno's turning this around. He's going to tank the turret. Lamia, one more attack will nice. go down, and Curse is able to turn around. But XPK with the flash gets the charm on the Slepper, picks up the kill with the help of the turret. Uh. And actually, uh, Lee Sin, he was able to kill Mundo as well. A little bit. I mean, great. Yeah, good on Maluno to actually go and dive and take the damage from the turret. Bad on Curse to stick around. Yeah. So, and yeah, the, using the ult, having Angus use the ult on himself and not for Moopsie, because it's kind of like, you know, I'm going down real quick, and I know you're right next to me, Moopsie. You're going to be following very quickly, and, yeah, it should have just, just a little bit of a bad call there. But you saw how difficult that fight was for Fnatic, and mm. uh, even though they were able to quickly take down Yorick and then take down Karthus without Yorick ghouling Karthus, which is, like, their ideal situation, um, you know, better would be taking down Ezreal and uh, Karthus, but, right. you know, even with that situation, they all took a lot of damage in the process, and then Ezreal was able to chase them down. Yeah, the Spirit Rush back up. XPK wants to chunk out Moopsy very quickly and may actually get it here. The Spirit Rush is actually down, but the, uh, the Foxfire will be more than enough. So Yeah, just barely creeping into range with that yeah. Foxfire. And here's the thing. We were talking about the goal just a little bit, and Karthus... Just, just you know, right before those like, two fights ago, was now what was actually back even with XPK. But now, a few kills later, and Ari has soared into the gold lead. Now a 2K lead over the Karthus, the biggest lead that XPK has had over the AP mid so far. And is trying to go ahead and get that dragon, but it will not be Cyanide there. Able to grab it. Malunu out there in the middle of the pit it is a 4v3 here, right in front of the dragon. <laughs> And uh, at 4v5, actually, you know, you did have the teleport there coming in from Soaz. But uh, now Curse is just dropping one by one. And Fnatic can just go ahead and grab whatever they want. Most does it get the kill down onto Lee Sin. And Slepper is ghoul trying to get some damage over the ridge. But Soaz coming on in with the ultimate, trying to capitalize with everything. York goes down to Ezreal, going to be going down double kill. Zinnick is now just being caught behind and now has the flash just to get to safety. But the orb, the damage, the rocket should be more than enough. And there you go. Could, if Moopsie's here though, could it be an ace? Now he's gonna go back off. Yeah, so another one fight for Fnatic, and that that one was huge. So uh, yeah. now all of a sudden they went from an even game to 5k ahead almost. Uh, they're gonna be able to grab this tower and just, you know, yeah. perfect fight for them. Wonderful so as fight. forcing it out, forcing Slepper to stay behind. He has the armor, he has the attack speed slow, where it's pretty difficult for Slepper to take him down. Uh, he just doesn't have enough damage. And so as a result, he was just stuck dueling with Malphite. It allowed the rest of the team to come in. They were able to force the fight, pick up a number of kills when Karthus wasn't with them. So now, now it's a matter of what Karthus does actually from here. And granted, they still have a lot of objective damage. Um, you know, Karthus, he's an amazing champ at taking objectives like Dragon, like the Baron. And if uh, Fnatic does get caught off guard, if someone's caught somewhere else, like if Corky's caught down bot lane farming, there's a possibility they can go ahead and sneak the Baron. 
But here's the thing, though. Ari is so ridiculously fed, and if, it gets, and if they get found out, all that burst damage coming on in could really just spell doom. It's really just a matter of take out the Ari, make her a non-issue, and Zinnick <laughs> almost getting caught there. Oh, and yeah, so yeah. Ari, the ultimate, is down for a while, so that's kind of a shame. Um, they will have to you know, sit back and wait for it to be back up. But uh, in the meantime, Slepper just still pushing down the bottom lane. And actually, Fnatic, they're going to take this opportunity to push mid. So um, you know, we'll see if they can pick anyone off. I, it'd be kind of difficult. Like They don't really have the best pushing team. Slepper able to grab that turret. It was down so low from earlier. So Fnatic really just needs to back off and um, you know, wait until their ults are up. Yep, and Slepper, he's going to take a little while before he actually rejoins with the rest of the team to defend this tier two here in mid. Uh, so as everyone, uh, everyone from Fnatic, their ults are up with the exception of uh, XPK, but it shouldn't be too long. You got about uh, less than 30 seconds here. So if this pressure can continue, and look, the GAs, they're coming. So has he's got one for himself already. The GAs are coming. The GAs are coming. Actually, you know what? Slepper has one. He just bought one for himself yep. as well. So, yeah, if anyone's going to be pumping out a lot of damage here from Curse, if anyone's going to be making a huge difference, it's going to be him. Yeah, the big issue is with that GA, he only has a Triforce for damage, so um, mm -hmm. not really deep into his build, but they're actually going for the Baron. Karthus can kill it very quickly. XPK saw the ward drop. He knows that it is dropping 4,000, 3,000. It's going down very quickly. I think they're going to be able to pick it up. XPK can't steal it. Cyanide it. jumping in, but Curse is able to take it down. Cyanide will go down, but kicking out Moopsy so they can pick up the kill, but the Yorick Ghoul will bring him back, and Curse can chase them out of here. XPK very, very low. Uh, N rated and so as have to try and retreat, but they have to deal with the Slepper in pursuit. Curse trying to slowly take down anyone they can. XPK will be going down to the Karthus ult. The shutdown will happen. Finally, Shiroi is being popped from Enraid, wants to get Soaz out of there, but may be falling behind himself. You got the rest of Curse following in pursuit, and you got four members of Curse still with that Baron buff. They're looking to push, and they took that very convincingly nice sneak. Very well done. Yeah, and they will be able to push in. So now that lead from Fnatic completely vaporized. Like, it's just, yep. it's gone. Uh, they didn't have vision of the Baron. Yep. Curse had a very strong Baron team late in the game. They're going to be able to take down this turret. They might have to back off, though, because Malphite still has his ultimate up, and XPK is in as well. So as trying to force them off of the turret. Just stall for a moment. He has the GA still because he didn't oh, go no. down. He walks up. He has the AoE. Cyanide forcing in the fight, and they can pursue Malunu, but he will use his ult and get out of there. But oh. so as with the follow-up, Lamia has the damage. Slepper will go down, has the GA, but if they can kill him quickly when he procs, yep. no, he's going to get out of there. Nice. Very well done. I th for a second there, I thought it was going to be a little bit hairy. The curse, no, get out of there. It's not worth it, but they managed to get it. Got out. Granted, for the next five minutes, Slepper's not going to have that revive from the GA, but uh, you know the Baron buff is going to be lasting for quite a while. They still got about two minutes left on that thing, but Fnatic, recognizing that uh, curse is a little bit low, they may take this opportunity to go ahead and push, but then again, Moopsy, he is back. Yeah, so uh, they will be able to uh, hold off for a second. And, um, you know, with that Baron buff, with, you know, the lead that they've built up and pushing themselves into the late game, it is a very even gold game. But uh, that tanky team for Curse is very difficult to deal with. And XPK, he's only one mere mortal man. He, you know, he can't <laughs> do it all. Uh, we'll see. He might actually dive in for Karthus here. Mike tries to go for it. The DFG just on its own doing incredible amounts of damage to Moopsy, but not able to finish off with the rest of it. The DFG doing 44% of health. That is huge. Yeah. No, he has a massive amounts of burst damage. So, um, you know, when you consider he also has the magic resist shredding and the spell yep. pen, uh, that's absolutely huge. Karthus really needs to get an Abyssal Scepter of his own almost so that he can survive, or just a GA. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if he built into that, but right now I think he is looking to get a... Uh, uh, void staff so that he can you know counter out some is. of the MR that they have there because yeah so um, yeah particularly for like Ari he wants to just be able to take her down yeah and that's that's a good call too because if you gain, if you can manage to take out the Ari you can pretty much take the rest of the fight because then that's a, then that's a problem with having someone on your team so front loaded with gold if they manage to fall then the entire plan falls apart but Malunu's out in front 
Very brave. Going right. He does not care about damage. And Angus actually getting the kill down on Alenia. True Sharp Barrage coming on. Not going to be shaving anyone today. But Zinnick there with heals. Keeping Malunu tank topped off. Keeping him resistant. And he's still just charging onward in. There's still 30 seconds left on the Baron buff too. So they're going to have it for the rest of this fight. And Curse slowly taking down Soas. And here comes the Karthus ult. Boom. Popping the GA on the Soas. He's going to be weak. And Curse just going to go ahead and move on in. Very good fight, and I think that's game. Yeah, Curse able to pick up this win. They will push into the Nexus. They're tanky enough. There's the GGs, take, take I'm assuming. The yeah, grabbing the, uh, <laughs> the inhibitor. But still, really nice job from Curse. XPK had the early advantages, but they just didn't have quite enough damage to deal with them. And uh, Curse was able to pull it around. Moopsie, is it going to go down? One more. Yes, he does go down, <laughs> but uh, it's okay. He still has this team. They're going to grab the Nexus and move on to face M5. So Curse versus M5 in the finals. I'm excited. That Are you excited? That is fantastic. Wonderfully done. Curse coming on back from that. Fantastic. It's been a fantastic. This has been a great, great, great series. Yeah, no, it really has been. Uh, both teams looking incredibly impressive. XPK uh, just not quite able to get it off and the big thing was there was the one fight where they were really far ahead and they right. they had won the one fight they had a 6k gold advantage uh xpk didn't have his ultimate and then um curse was able to force a fight while the ultimate was still down and mm -hmm. um you know pick up the kills and everyone just going down at the baron curse forced the baron out Fnatic didn't have, you know, the map awareness there. They didn't have any control. And so losing the Baron and that fight was huge. But I, I just, just want to make this quick uh, mention here, too, because this is the problem with having someone on your team so front loaded with gold. Because you have XPK getting yeah. the huge bulk of it. Your jungle is a little bit crippled here. And you know, you're, not, you're not getting as much as you normally would on your AD carry. But if you look at Curse here... It's a little bit more of an even spread. You have immensely more on your jungler than their jungler. Everything's a little bit closer together. And if you can manage to go ahead and convincingly take a fight where you force someone out, then you can go ahead and take that lead and abuse it. Yeah, and despite the early lead that Ari had, um, you know, Moopsie on Karthus, he was still neck to neck with her in gold. So 12.6K to 12.5K. Yeah. A lot of that's from turrets and whatnot. But uh, yes, I mean, even being uh, being that far behind early and having the early pressure against Karthus, um, Karthus still came out on top. Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good. So your EU IPL Elites Finals will be M5 versus Curse EU battling out for the biggest chunk of that $3,000 prize pool plus seeding for our events and potential qualifier spots as well for our events. So we will see how that goes down when that happens. But also happening later tonight, you still have the uh, we still have the semifinals for the NA coming on up. We got TSM versus Dynamic. That's going to be huge. And MTW Dignitas, is that it? Meet Playground Dignitas. Meet Playground Dignitas, wow. Yeah. So uh, that's... Yeah, that's astounding. And if you guys haven't been watching Meat Playground, they've looked very strong. Pope Elter's new team, mm -hmm. um, you know, they've won a couple of cool matches. But yeah, definitely some uh, some big contenders in there. Dignitas has been looking fantastic recently, though. They have. Yeah, you know, they've they've taken what they've learned in Korea. Yeah. They've applied it here. Yeah, you know, it's 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 a revived team. It really is. You know, because yeah. most most of the top uh, top teams, they do have periods where they dip a little bit, but then you know they are revived. They refresh their game plan and they come back that much stronger. So we will see what happens there starting in about, uh, wow, it's been a long in broadcast day. In about 40 minutes. About, in about 40, 50 minutes, that's going to be going down. So do stay tuned for that. And, uh, you know, like we've mentioned before, we'll mention again if you've missed it, five, five $50 RP cards we're giving away. IGN.com slash IPL. Go to the news section, scroll down. I assure you it's there. Just click a whole bunch of buttons. It's hard to find, I'll be honest. But uh, yeah, it's in the chat also. We'll be linking that in the oh, chat. Yeah. Definitely, uh, yeah, check that out. So go ahead, check that out. We will see you in just a little bit for our NA matches. We are done for today. Hat person, Red Baron, we are out. Do please follow us. Our Twitter information is right down there. And we will see you guys next time.